Hi everyone and welcome to this video that is all about ethics in psychology. So the reason this is really important is that ethics is embedded in every single topic this year. So that you can see that while it's only got one key idea in the introduction to psychology topic, ethics is actually embedded in every single topic that we'll cover. So it's really important that you can understand these as, as a foundation to then apply it throughout the year. So just to give you a bit of um, a definition to work with here, ethics is really that set of moral principles that's used by psychological researchers to kind of describe how participants should be treated and protected. Okay, so it applies to absolutely every stage of the research as outlined below. Now to give you a bit of background information, until World War II there wasn't really any kind of ethical guidelines or rules that people had to follow. It was just assumed that researchers would, um, they would protect their participants from harm and they would be professional. Then um, the atrocities of World War II happened and a lot of German physicists actually carried out quite horrifying experiments on the people in their concentration camps. And this eventually led to the Nuremberg trials. Now, these physicians were um, tried for crimes against humanities and crimes of war. And it was then revealed all of these horrifying experiments they'd conducted. Um, this then led to the Nuremberg Code, which was a list of, of guidelines that outlined the ethical treatment of humans in any kind of research. Now, this has then kind of informed lots of different guidelines. Um, most importantly for us, the American Psychological Association Ethics Guidelines. So they're really going to inform what we're going to talk about now. So, the first thing that researchers have to keep in mind for a psychology experiment is confidentiality. So, all participants in any study, they have the right to their own privacy, their, their own personal details need to be kept confidential unless they have given consent for them to be released. All right, the next one is voluntary participation. Now it's really important that in any study you have participants who are volunteering to take part. Now, this obviously wasn't the case for that research in uh, World War II, but it's important that people are coming of their own free will, that they're not going to suffer any negative consequences for not taking part, and they're not being overly pressured to take part either. This can get a little tricky when there's money involved or some kind of reward for participation, but we will talk about this at a later date. Okay, the next one is right to withdraw. Now basically at any time throughout the study, the participants have the right to withdraw, so to not take part anymore. Not only should they be able to, but they shouldn't suffer any negative consequences for this. So a researcher has to be really willing to just, you know, let people drop out if that's what they would like to do. Okay. Um, if, as well, if any participant is harmed and a researcher can see that you know, harm is coming to the participants, the researcher themselves actually has to withdraw participants at that stage as well. Okay, the next one here is informed consent procedures. Now this can get a little murky, so let's go into a bit more detail. But basically, wherever possible, particip participants should be given information about what they're actually going to be taking part in. Um, it needs to be documented, they need to sign it, and they need to be aware of any kind of possible side effects or negative consequences as a part of that study. Now, for people who are incapable um, of you know, providing that kind of consent, this could be for, for children, for disabled people, um, there needs to be a guardian who can sign for them. Um, researchers also need to be really aware of vulnerable people um, and not kind of using their power as a researcher for evil when gaining consent. All right, this is where it gets a little bit tricky. Sometimes in studies, um, people knowing about the study and what's going to happen and what they're looking for, it can kind of spoil the results. Sometimes the researchers are looking for things that um, if people know about them, it will be ruined. Now you'll see some of these in class, um, but you'll need, you'll need to know that this is about the single blind procedure. Okay? Um, now, in order to conduct this and to kind of withhold a little bit of information from participants, it has to be justified. So the researcher has to be able to say that in order, in order for them to do this, if they're going to withhold that information, it has to be worth it for the community and for that individual. Um, it has to be because there is absolutely no other way that they can conduct that study. And 
in this case, if someone is deceived throughout that study, they need to be debriefed thoroughly at the end of that study as well. Okay, the next one, debriefing. So this is where at the end of every study or any research, all the participants need to be um, debriefed about what the study was about, um, what the purpose was, and just some information about what was found. Um, the research also needs to kind of correct any um, any misbeliefs or attitudes that the, that the participants may have had. So they need to really go through the study in a lot of depth and explain what happened. Okay, accurate reporting. This might seem obvious, but it's really important that, that um, researchers remain professional. There can be a lot of pressure sometimes conducting research, that people need funding and they need to get good results, but it's really important that they, they have to report what happened even if they're not happy with what the results were. Okay. okay, professional conduct. This is just a bit of a blanket statement for researchers that they need to conduct themselves professionally, right? And there's lots of different things that that could encompass, um, and we will talk about those in class. Okay, so just to run you through some of the resources, this information has come from the textbooks, of course, and um, Christy Gerbert's website. So if you're looking for any more information, please go to those sources and ask me lots of questions. See you guys.